Okay. Uh, we are officially back on uh, Elizabeth April. Um, it's been a little bit, but uh, I believe I have retained enough knowledge that she has imparted upon me about the Galactic Federation of Light that I will be able to pick this right back up, I hope. Um, still don't know why the moon is hollow, but I hope we can get some answers uh, in this this episode. And he gave me that vibration. I'm like, oh, yes, okay, this is, this is right. And so I, I said, okay, so... So why are you here? So you're from this, you know, federation or you're from this organization group. Okay, cool. You know, why are you here? And he says, Elizabeth, I want to, or I want to invite you. I want to invite you to a meeting, a meeting that we're having. I'm like, okay, you're, you want to invite me to a meeting? I said, just for those who didn't watch the video prior to this, we're, we're kind of recapping just a little bit here. This being appeared to her uh, and, and, got her woke on this Galactic Federation of Light. And the Galactic Federation of Light is a galaxy or maybe universe-spanning organization that's kind of like Star Trek and Star Wars combined. Like, they're kind of like the Jedi Council, but also kind of like the Federation uh, of Planets. Like, it's... Yeah, so anyway, that's... And, and this is this is this is her first interaction with uh with I, I guess an <laughs> I guess an alien. Okay, cool. And he says, he says the meeting, and I remember this so clear. He says the meeting is December twenty first. So once again, it was probably around the fifteenth or sixteenth, maybe even seventeenth or eighteenth. I remember journaling about it after this happened. And he says, I want to invite you to a meeting, uh, a Galactic Federation meeting. And he says it's really important that you're there. And I said, okay. Uh, where do I go? Like, where's the meeting? Am I driving somewhere? Like, where, where am I going? Right? Where do you need me? And he says, no. He says, the meeting is going to be in the astral plane. Of he course. He tells me it's going to be, it's going to be on the moon, right? It's going to be, it's going to be around the moon. And I said, okay. And he says, I will come get you. Just a uh, pro tip though, for those uh, who may be taking a trip in the astral plane for the first time uh, and going and circling, circumventing the moon uh, in the astral plane. Um, <clears throat> no free parking. Bring quarters. You at the time of the meeting, and I will take you to where the meeting is. And I'm like, kind of like, I don't, okay, cool. I don't know what to expect. Uh, he didn't give me much else. Oh, yeah. This is what he said. He says, it's really important that on the 21st of December, 2011, it's really important that at, I believe it was at 4 a.m. It was either at 2 a.m. or 4 a.m., but it was like right in the middle of the night, Eastern Standard Time in Canada. And so he says, it's at like 2 a.m., you know, on the 21st, and he says, it's really important that you're not sleeping. It's really important that you're actually awake. I had a DND game where we went to the astral plane. We had to fight a bunch of mind flayers. Illithids. I <laughs> Anytime I think about mind flayers from D&D, &D, and by the way, that sounds that sounds fantastic. That sounds like a great D&D &D game. Um, but every time I think of mind flayers, illithids, I always just like... Because they, they're squiddy faces. They got them fucking tentacle mouths and shit. Like, like that. Holy little Zoidberg! That's the first thing I thought of too when I saw Futurama. I'm like he's a fucking illithid. He going, he going, he going to break your mind. That you're con uh, uh, consciously awake, but that you're in meditation, so that you can come with me in the astral, right? No, by this point, I was astral traveling, remote viewing. I was opening up to uh, telepathy. I was seeing things, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. I'll astral travel with him, and I'll go to this meeting. I didn't know what to expect. Okay. Other planets so here it is. that I've Couple created in the solar system are doing very well. I swear to God, if she mentions how many Bothans died to bring her that information, I'm roundhouse kicking her into the outer rim of the galaxy far, far away. <laughs> That's pretty fucking good. Holy shit. <laughs> fuck, man. I should just have you guys make this video for me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> a couple days later, I, I take a little nap. I wake up, I set my alarm, wake up around 1 a.m., 1.30, somewhere around there. And and so then, you know, at the time being, I sit in meditation, I close my eyes, I'm meditating for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and boom, there he is. He walks into the room again. Same sort of thing. Open she fell asleep and then had another dream. <clears throat> my eyes, he's not there. Close my eyes, he's there. Open my eyes, not there. 
close my eyes, boom, there he is. And he's like seven feet tall, right? And so I'm tired, right? And I'm trying to stay awake. But when I see him, like he perks me right up and he says, okay, Elizabeth, we're going to go to this meeting. And he says, follow me. And I'm like, okay, cool. So boom, there he is. He's off. He's just zoomed out of the room. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So instantly I go out of my body. I'm following him. We leave the planet Earth. We leave planet Earth and we go over to the moon. He told me it was in the moon. And so then I didn't really know to explain, like, why are we going to the moon for a meeting? And all of a sudden, okay, no word of a lie, uh, we go inside the moon, right? So we're astro traveling. Now, with astro traveling. Shut the front door. You went into the moon? Wow. <laughs> wow, man. Uh,. I oh man, I love it. I love it. I love this so much. Like I can walk through a wall if I wanted to, right? So we're astro traveling, and he zooms into the moon. Like he's he 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 astro travels right inside of it. And I'm like, okay. So I astro travel. I follow him right inside the moon, and we end up in this giant auditorium, and it literally looked like something from Star Wars or Star Trek. It was like the moon was hollow on the inside. I don't know if you guys knew this, but like that blew my mind too. I'm like, we're, we're inside the moon right now. I didn't know it was, it was hollow, right? As we're inside the moon and inside the moon is a giant room. I don't know. I don't think that it took up the entire inside of the moon because it was probably like a, it was a big space, but it wasn't as big as the moon, I don't think. But it was a really big circular room and all along the circle, was these chairs okay and Other honestly guys, that if you created in the solar system are doing very well when she talks about the federation of light she's probably talking about the moon nights from aqua teen hunger force <laughs> all they do is come to earth and spread chaos wherever they go <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about we weren't gonna have some nerd like this in our hollow moon yeah that's that's pretty good actually that's funny I don't know. This is a bit too hippy dippy for Moon and Night action, if you ask me. I don't know. I don't know, man. This is some wacky shit. She's so she's so endearing, though. That's the thing too that I I really I I love I love Wing Nuts so much because of how endearing they can be. How that I've created charmingly so wacky. Okay, Lizzie, put down the psychedelics and stop watching the prequels as you do them. Maybe also the Star Trek cartoon, too. Just stop it. Get help. <laughs> I wanted to do it more. You've heard this before. Have you heard that the moon is hollow and that there's like a meeting room inside the, the moon and then that, that, that uh, the Galactic Federation has meetings there? Like, let me know because I don't have any sort of external validation. Like, I just, I just channel. I just know what I channel, right? So anyway, so so there's this giant meeting room. There's chairs all along the outside of this giant circle, circle room, auditorium. And it was really cool because there was beings from all over the universe. Like I had never seen these kind of beings before. Like, um, and there was about two of them. There was about two interdimensional beings or aliens from each species from this entire galaxy and probably beyond. Uh, but it was like Galactic Federation, all of the Galactic Federation members. And of course, the Galactic Federation members are all different species. I had never... So here's another thing to keep in mind in case you haven't been keeping up on, on, on the, the Galactic Federation of Light like I have. Uh, I, I, I have been studying under Elizabeth April now for a few weeks. Um, the Galactic Federation of Light does not interfere in earthly politics although earthly people can be manipulated by aliens both good and bad but they hide themselves from us because we're not quite ready yet which is weird because if this is a galaxy spanning thing you would think that they wouldn't really give that much of a shit about earth because there's got to be a lot of earths out there a lot of a lot of planets that are just as as dumb as we are you would think but for some reason now uh, there's this, uh, Galactic Senate delegation thing. Um, this, this is straight out of the prequels. I'm with you guys on this one. This is, like, straight out of the fucking Star Wars prequels. Um. 
together, all gathered inside the moon. What do they? What do they? What did they want to talk to you about, Elizabeth? This this face, this this beautiful face, man. Look, I'm just, you know, you know what? That this is this is this is this is the fucking. This has got to be our. Uh, this has got to be our 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 thumbnail this time. Okay. Let me let me let me capture this while we while we play. Oh my god, this is so good. Oh, never seen still to this day had never seen so many beings, di different beings in one room together, and so I'm like so like looking around, just so blown away. So now, not only were there actual physical beings inside the in the solar system are doing very well, until you know the gray side of the force. Sit your ass down, little girl. Oh. And let my Little brother, who is a Jedi Master of the Grey Side of the Force, teach you a thing or two. Cheeky <laughs> smiley face. Cheeky smiley face, indeed. Okay. All right. Um. Oh yeah. Let me turn off my Photoshop. This is getting a little. This is getting a little wild for recording. Let's see if we can make it through this. All right. Center of the moon, all sitting around this giant auditorium. Um. But there was also like. I don't know, like at least thousands of astral bodies that were just floating around on all of the outside of this, not on the outside, but on the inside, but not really sitting in a seat, just floating around. And I recognized all of these beings floating around as human beings that were back on planet Earth. Oh. Right? So here I am. I'm one of these floating astral bodies inside the moon. There's all these other floating astral bodies of human beings inside the center of the moon. And there must have been tens of thousands of physical beings that were all connected to the Galactic Federation. So I'm like, well, this is so cool. I'm like totally nerding out by this point. Nerding and out. Inside, so in the center. N <sighs> nerding out so you are visited by an extra planner being he shows up in the middle of your bedroom and he tells you that he needs to take you somewhere he then shows up again confirming that this actually happened and it wasn't just simply a dream he guides you out of your body and takes you to the moon and now the moon is hollow and it's filled with aliens and astrally projecting people in the thousands, tens of thousands. And your reaction to this is, I'm super nerding out right now. Of the, the spherical room. Other planets that I've uh, created in the solar system are doing very well. Bitch, stop hanging your Jar Jar Binks and Ken dolls. Those aren't beings, those are plastic dolls. <laughs> Shit. It was a platform, and the platform was floating, and there was one giant tall, like probably at least eight feet tall, looked like a gray, but not a very stereotypical gray, like looked much older, much wi uh, wiser, and instead of the head being kind of around like this, it was, it, went, it was more elongated, and I would say the skin color was more of like a dark, like a dark gray maybe even like a dark purpley like this is kind of an interesting being right anyway so he was conducting the meeting and i honestly don't know uh, i don't think he was projecting his voice i think he was um <laughs> telepathically projecting his voice this is what happens when you, when you this is what happens when you drink too much blue milk yeah dude into all of our minds therefore no matter what language every being spoke and if you didn't even speak light language you would instantly tra uh, translate it in your own mind right so anyway so this this being in the center he's speaking to the entire group and i remember i remember the uh, part of the conversation i mean i think i journaled about it after and uh, and he was talking about yes he was talking about the big shift that was taking place on planet Earth. So that whole entire meeting was just about planet Earth. And I was baffled at how many interdimensional beings were there to hear about planet Earth. Like, I, I'm like, I mean, I figured humans were just, you know, involved in that, but it wasn't. Anyway, and so he was talking about planet Earth. He was talking about a huge shift that was about to happen in 2012. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about the mind prophecy, but it's not going to happen. I mean, people got it all wrong, blah, 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 blah. Right. But he was talking about that. He was talking about us all being prepared for the shift in 2012. And he said that he he um, asked all of the teachers 
to come in and all of the different species to come in to be aware of what's about to happen in 2012 and to prepare us for it. And he told me, or he told us a bunch of other really cool things and I forget about what they were now. Um, you forgot? This life-changing and drastically important not only to yourself, your community, your state, your country, your, your your planet but the galaxy and you just fucking forgot how how elizabeth i'm disappointed oh there's a lot of really cool things that he said and I've mentioned to them in other videos of what he kind of warned us about um, at that time. But I remember halfway through, I kind of got distracted, right? And I just kind of nerded out. You were supposed to be the teacher. I know, man. She was supposed to. <laughs> oh my god why am i so so good at the pause game oh wow wow whoo you're gonna have to help me decide which one we're gonna use uh for the thumbnail oh fuck that's funny oh man <clears throat> eh. there we go okay cool that's a good one out and I was looking beside me because I was up against the wall but I was in my astral body and I was looking beside me at, at the different interdimensional beings because I'm like what other aliens are here like what do they look like like at this point I hadn't been exposed to nearly half of them and I'm looking around and like in like it kind of looked like a like a stadium right and then like two chairs beside me was like these little tiny like cute little troll beings like I'm not even kidding you. Like they look like these little trolls, like the troll dolls that we used to have as kids. And they would sit and they were sitting there. And there was these little alien beings with the troll. They looked like little trolls. So cute. There was two in one chair. That's how small they were. There was another being that was very gelatin like, right? And I thought that was kind of weird. It was like goopy. Um, it looked like a blob there, but it was clearly very conscious. Um, yeah, and just all different types of beings. And I remember I was just kind of creeping around saying, whoa, who is here right now? You know, this is pretty cool. So anyway, so that was the first time I ever got introduced to the Galactic Federation. Yeah. Good luck, trolls. Good luck, trolls, and uh, Yafit from from the Orville. Okay. Okay. Federation. Ever since then, I've been communicating, channeling the Galactic Federation. Um, yeah, ever since then. Super cool. Uh, I also wanted to talk about a really interesting event that happened Um uh, a couple of weeks ago, and honestly, if you're the client that I was channeling for, you can always say, hey, if you feel comfortable, because I channeled this information from a client. Now, once again, guys, can you imagine me? Okay, okay, okay. Here's the thing. <clears throat> I usually try and, and, and make it 11 minutes, because it's a 55-minute video, and I figured five videos will watch the whole thing. Um, but if she's like done with the whole moon thing, I think we're just going to wrap it up here. And the next time we, we go back and revisit the truth about the Galactic Federation of Light, the moon is hollow. Uh, we'll just finish it off like the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, Elizabeth, I am, I am just so blown away. I am the, wow, this just got even way better. It's one of those things where you're like, is this a good idea? to do a series watching this one live stream is this a good idea yes this was a very good idea yes i am i am thrilled